my name is Peter, and one year ago, long before I even started this channel, I purchased my first Chromebook. Since then, I've enjoyed the many benefits of a Chrome OS machine, but I've also been frustrated by dozens of issues. In this video, I'm going to go over my thoughts and my experience with my Chromebook after using it for one year, and I will give my honest opinion on whether you should buy a Chromebook. Let's get started. I'd like to do a bit of a channel update right here. You may have noticed I changed my channel name. It is now Peter Salmon, me. The reason I did this was mainly because I felt it better represented how I want this channel to be my thoughts and not thoughts hidden behind an internet alias. In the future, you can expect to learn more about me, my interests, and why I started this channel. Also, I recently made a fairly big purchase that's going to become re relevant in about a week, so stay tuned for that. For now though, let's continue the video. There are two different types of people who use Chromebooks. First, you have those who simply want an easy-to-use, basic computer. On the other hand, there are people who want to use all of the more advanced and in-depth features of their Chromebook. If you've seen my past videos, you know which group I fall into. By the way, I've put timestamps in the description if you would like to skip to a certain section or revisit parts of the video. You should know that my Chromebook is the HP X360 14. I made a review of it if you're interested and it cost about $500. Your experience may vary at different price points. Anyways, let's start with the good. My favorite part about my Chromebook is the battery life. For context, I usually keep my brightness at 100% and use my computer fairly heavily, and yet I still get anywhere from 7 to 10 hours of battery life on a single charge. That means I never have to worry about finding a charging port or even checking my battery. It just never fails. Where other computers often get less battery life than advertised, Chromebooks sometimes get more. Quite the achievement. Fortunately, that battery life doesn't come at the cost of performance either. My personal machine is outfitted with an HDEN, Core i3, and 8GB of RAM, so it isn't exactly underpowered, but it's not the most powerful machine either. Chrome OS doesn't care though. Dozens of tabs, including video and music streaming, Google Docs, and other websites rarely cause slowdowns, and Android apps perform sufficiently as well. Linux apps were a bit of a different story, but I'll get to those a bit later, so stick around. One other thing to note is that how fast Chromebooks boot up. You may have seen a Google ad advertising 6 second boot up time, and while I usually experience something closer to 10 or 15 seconds, it is still exceptionally fast. I remember on my old Windows laptops would take as long as 10 minutes to power up, unlock, and finally load the programs, so the quick boot up times are a really nice touch. Overall, I've been more than satisfied with the speed of my computer, especially for general use on the web. Now these next comments will vary a lot from Chromebook to Chromebook, but I think the build quality is definitely still something to note. I have a few complaints. The screen doesn't get very bright and it wobbles, the rubber feet on the underside peeled off, the fan runs loudly, and there is a somewhat concerning bendability to the main body. Other than that though, everything is pretty good. The keyboard and trackpad are honestly some of the best I've used, outside of Apple trackpads of course, and I haven't experienced any scratches or dents so far. Speaking of the trackpad, if you do decide to buy a Chromebook, you can expect to have a decent one. Every single Chrome OS machine I've used, even cheap plastic computers, have had a better trackpad experience than most Windows machines. There are rumors that Google ensures every Chromebook has a good trackpad, and I personally think those have some merit. Enough about the physical features though, let's talk about the software. This is where things go a little more south, but it's not all bad. As you probably know, Chrome OS is generally a super simple OS, and in that respect, it excels. It's super nice to just pop open Chrome and do everything from the browser. I can also pin websites as apps, like what I do with Spotify. But I don't want to be restricted to just using websites for all of my computer usage, so I enabled Linux. In theory, it sounds great. You can easily run Linux on your Chromebook. In practice though, there are a lot of issues to work through. As you hopefully know, I have a YouTube channel and I create YouTube videos. However, finding a video editor that actually works on a Chromebook is damn near impossible. Every single time I thought I had a working editor, something always failed. Either the audio didn't work, or files wouldn't load, or the experience was just so, so slow. This has meant that I've created almost all of my videos using iMovie on a MacBook Air from 2012. 
Now I can already picture the comments telling me that if I wanted to edit videos, I shouldn't have bought a Chromebook. And you are right. But when I bought this computer, I didn't plan on creating a YouTube channel. Sure, it was an idea in the back of my mind, but never something I'd acted on. Sorry, distractions, distractions. Some Linux apps did work decently though. Minecraft, for one thing, works pretty well. I also got Lutris, a Steam alternative, running on my system. By the way, I left the links for a lot of what I've mentioned in the description of the video, so check this out if you are interested. And while you're there, hit that subscribe button. It's an easy way to support the video and the channel as a whole. In general though, the Linux experience just wasn't great. Applications crashed and lagged, certain features didn't work, and some apps just didn't work at all. This has meant a lot of unfortunate limitations to my computer usage, and a lot of frustration trying to find workarounds. Although there are apps like Crossover, which try to emulate Windows programs on Chrome OS, they, to put it bluntly, suck. The app compatibility is super limited, and even apps that work, don't work well. I've had other issues too. Sometimes my Chromebook will just crash. It usually isn't even when it's under stress or anything, it just happens and I really don't know why. Even worse, when it's running Linux apps, my Wi-Fi sometimes bugs out and I have to turn it off and on again for it to continue working. Again, I have no idea why, it just happens. One thing I haven't mentioned much is Android apps. And the reason is why, well, they aren't really made for big displays. Just like Android tablets, Chromebooks don't always fit the apps, which makes the experience less than ideal. Another thing I know people worry about with Chromebooks is their storage. Now, I only have 64GB of storage, but I actually haven't had any issues with it. Almost everything I do is stored in the cloud. Still, it would be nice to have a bit more wiggle room. Hold on a second though. Let's take a step back from all this negativity and look at the big picture. Generally, I do enjoy using my Chromebook. I have some complaints, yes, but they would really only apply to a minority of computer users. But should you really buy a Chromebook? The answer is very subjective. There are some use cases a Chromebook is great for filling. A cheap laptop for kids or schools, a simple piece of tech for older people, or as a secondary media consumption device for individuals or for families. As a main computer though, I don't recommend buying a Chromebook. Sure, it will work great 99% of the time, but that 1% of the time when you really need a Windows or Mac exclusive program is super frustrating and not worth the trouble. In the future, as Chromebooks become more and more capable, it may be easier to recommend them, but for now, I really can't bring myself to recommend a computer that has a half-baked OS. So those are my thoughts after a year. What do you think about Chrome OS? Is it a viable option in 2020? Let me know down in the comments. For now though, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe for more awesome content later on. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.